little kitties, little kitties. <laughs> they all want love and attention. It's like there's not enough of me to go I around know, for you guys. <laughs> These are the escapees. There's always a few loosey-goosey ones. The rooster Maurice is the remnant of my breeding flock for uh, uh, some meat birds that I was breeding. He's like, um, I have survived. He has, he has. I've just decided to keep him and let him run loose with his two ladies. You have your horse apples out here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a nice compost pile. It's probably nice and warm and they could get all these like good Eaten out here, huh? Yeah, the horses. Uh, the horses actually do get a little bit of grain when they yeah. come in the barn. Yeah. Uh, and so, of course, their manure probably has a little bit of residual grain in it, yeah. which uh, entices the chickens to go out there and scratch around. We don't usually bring the horses in as much as we did this winter. Yeah. But with the with the cold and with as much snow as we've had, we decided to use. Uh, the horse shed for the cattle as well. So okay. the cattle had two sheds yeah. and we've been bringing the horses into the barn. So that meant extra stall cleaning for me, hooray. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but also it meant that we got to keep uh, a lot of the manure that would normally just be out on the, on the field. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be able to use this uh, after it's been well composted in my potting mix. Uh, so we've sort of captured some fertilizer, which would otherwise just be, you know, wasted out on the pasture. Yeah. So. But they are making good use of it, and I they said, said that they did some. Stuff. They did some poo poo on there too. So <laughs> I just add it all. Add to some the top. extra nitrogen yeah. there. Some phosphorus. Thanks, yeah. guys. <laughs> So then, but all your chickens are pretty much in here? So yeah, my chickens spend the summer out on the pasture. There's a hoop house out in the middle of that pasture. So totally free range. Um, not totally, yeah. because they, they would get picked off if they were, but. What are the number one things that pick your chickens off here? Uh, birds of prey. Okay, so raptors. Raptors, yeah, yeah but not a lot. I mean, a raptor yeah. will ca catch a bird and eat it and be done. Yeah. So they're not as destructive as say a dog or a fox which will kill a lot of birds at one time. Right. Um, but when they're out on pasture, they're surrounded by the four foot poultry nets, which are kept hot. And in addition to that, there's generally uh, my Scottish Highland cattle around, which tend to keep predators out of the pastures mm -hmm. as well. So, and I keep them, like I said, in the middle of the pasture which reduces the predation because birds of prey like to come down from the trees uh, and, and kill, they're very uncomfortable coming right into the middle of the pasture because it's not as protected. So yeah. as long as I keep the birds away from the hedgerows and keep some good fences, generally don't have a lot of troubles. That's good. That's and good. occasionally we'll have a fox or a fisher cat. Yeah. Uh, and foxes are pretty easy to deal with because they respect hot fences. Fisher cats are a whole nother ball of wax. You just had an issue, right? Well, I just with... had an issue with a weasel. Right. Yeah, still, I believe we are continuing to have an issue with a weasel. Um, it initially killed all of our silkies, because oh. they, silkies sleep on the floor. They don't tend to roost. Mm. And so they were really, quote unquote, sitting ducks. Um, yeah. And the weasel killed all of them in one night. And that's that's the first time we knew we had a problem. Oh. And how did it get in, do you know? Oh, well, I mean, a weasel is only limited by the size yeah. of its skull. So a hole this big, if a mouse can get in, a weasel can get in. Wow. And so it definitely wasn't tight enough to keep, or there's almost nothing tight enough to keep a weasel out. So wow. generally, when we've had a weasel problem in the past, we move the flock. Right because the weasel has a small home range. Yeah. And uh, if you move the birds, you know, several hundred yards, the weasel's not gonna follow them. Right. But in the dead of winter, this really wasn't an option. Yeah. Uh, so we've been, we have been battling him. We've had built all kinds of uh, wooden uh, trap boxes mm -hmm. to try. These are boxes that are designed by folks that, that trap weasels um, for their fur. Huh. And so it's a way to, to do trapping without endangering anybody. I mean, a, a rat could, of course, yeah. go in there and potentially yeah. get trapped, but you're not going to affect a cat or yeah. one of the chickens. And you, yeah. put, you put a snap trap inside the weasel mm -hmm. box and you put bait at the back. So he comes in to go for the bait and get snap traps. And snap traps are the very, very most humane way to do it because right. snap traps are instantaneous. Right. Um, However, my weasel was not at all interested in any of these weasel boxes at all. <laughs> so we also tried, you know, have a heart traps, yeah. um, which we baited with chicken. 
Uh, we have tried nearly everything. Yeah. Um, and we have the nine barn cats, yeah. which have access. There's a hole. Right. Uh, and but they can go. can a weasel get through that hole too? So oh yeah, like, well the, oh, weasel, yeah. the weasel's already in there. Oh, so I see. Not, <laughs> yeah. I mean the weasel, like I said, he's yeah, not. Yeah, he could go anywhere. He can pre there. It's pretty hard to weasel proof anything yeah. unless you're, you know, hardware cloth. That's why they say coot. you could weasel your way into anything, right? <laughs> you got it, yep. So he, as far as we know, he is still active. Oh. Um, we haven't lost a bird in a week. But they, can, can, what if they roost? So pull that, yeah, pull that okay. down. Down. If yeah, they roost, they should be okay then, right? Hello, girlies. Oh, geez, somebody got. Oh, 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 who got Come in here, again? Finn. Come here, Finn. Who got we in? We don't need you, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, oh, I know, I know, sweetie. It's all right. My God. goodness, my goodness, so, so stressful, so stressful. We did come in during lay, so. Oh my goodness, I imagine they're laying at all times. Look at these girls. Hello, ladies. So this is my uh, my small and, lane and flock. And gentlemen. There is one, there's yeah. one gentleman left, yes. <laughs> um, we used to run about 500 laying hens. Wow. So this house is set up to winter 500 laying hens. And then the, the summer hoop house is also designed for 500. Uh, but we've decided to pull back quite a bit over the last couple of years. So we're doing more just like 125, yeah. which is really small but doable. It's it's big enough that it's worthwhile doing on a slightly commercial venture, yeah. but it's not so big that it's as much work as it used to be, which was a lot of egg packing mostly. Right. So how how long do you think you're going to keep uh, around this size flock? I think this is we'll stick with this from now okay. on. Yeah, I think we'll bring in a uh, 100 new chicks each season. Yeah. Um, call out birds as needed and and add new chicks as needed. So like we're gonna have a hundred new chicks coming next month. Okay, and uh, these are not ones you're breeding, you're just getting Right, them we're in not them. breeding okay. anymore. Yeah. I know, so what I was breeding were these black Australorps. Uh -huh. um, and I was breeding them for several years. I got my original breeding stock uh, from a woman down in North Carolina. She has yeah. really nice Australorp stock. I didn't want just sort of regular commercial stock. I wanted birds that she'd been selecting for good production and uh, for hardiness. And so then I would buy her breeding stock and then breed my own birds from that. Right. Um, but we're also not doing that anymore, so I'll be down to, uh, I'm gonna replace, I'm gonna replace mostly with Rhode Island Red. Oh next yeah, year. my little favorites. Right? Yeah, these are these are some remnant Rhode Island Reds. Yeah. These hens are fairly elderly at this point. Yeah. Um, but the beauty of the Rhode Island Red is they do keep laying pretty well. Yeah. Um, I have to balance the fact that one, I, I mean, they need to make enough eggs that mm -hmm. I can afford to maintain them. Right. Uh, and be, you know, mildly profitable, please. Mm -hmm. um, but also I like keeping them around as long as possible. Um, I feel the longer you have birds, the more they are attuned to what you're trying to do with them. Like yeah. um, moving them, they know the drill, um, they're easy to manage in the summer as far as moving them from place to place and, and taking down the fences. And they just, they're just, just like any experienced livestock when yeah. they, they know what they're doing, um, they're easier to manage. Once new hens can be very challenging, especially large groups of new hens. Uh, you have to teach them to roost. You have to, when you move them, sometimes they'll pile up in corners and how do, do you, how do you integrate them when you come in with a new flock do they you just like kind of put them all in one place or do you kind of lightly integrate them somehow I like to integrate into a new location like okay. there is a small group of these Australorps that were hatched this season right and I brought them here when I brought the old hens here Got so it. that they all came to this location at the same time and nobody had dominance nobody was like it's my home yeah. no it's my home <laughs> uh, they were all new yeah um, and so that worked really well. I actually didn't, there's an occasional tiff between two individual hens, but it hasn't, there hasn't been any, any issues. And this is a nice small flock now. Yeah. It's, it's much more manageable than when I had a really big flock. Well, I think even, you know, part of what makes it feel manageable is like just the, the size of the space that you have them in too. Like it, it, it doesn't feel too crowded or, mm -hmm. you know, and even though you said this is actually for even bigger amounts of chickens, but it just seems very spacious and they seem very calm, except for a couple of you girls who are like getting excited about the lay. <laughs> Can't say that I blame them. I wouldn't want to give birth every day. Oh my God, I wouldn't either. So much work. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, only, the only downside to having a small flock in here is that when it was a large flock, it actually heated the space better. Right, right. And so the, the fewer chickens you have in a big space like this, the colder they are. And yeah. I don't heat the space. Um, I've never heated it. I've chosen birds that um, are hardy. These big Australorps do really well in the winter. As you can see, they have a large body size. They are They're quite well big feathered. Girls. Yeah. They they winter better than these Rhode Island Reds do any day. They don't lay as well. Right. Uh, but they're definitely bigger and warmer uh, than the. As long as you can get them to, to tuck their heads so that they don't get frostbite on yeah. their combs. Yeah. Uh, occasionally you'll get roosters that don't tuck their heads and you'll get a lot of frostbite on them, mm. but the hens usually do. And what are some of the other like winter considerations that you have? Because it's not like they love being out in the snow like the ducks. They really don't. And yeah. uh, honestly, I haven't even been able to open the door without doing a lot of shoveling. I mean, there's three right. feet of snow on the other side of the door, right. so I can't even get it open. Uh, some winters, when when it's not so bad out there, I will open the doors and, and spread straw on the surface of the snow uh, to encourage them to go outside. Yeah. Um, and that's mostly just because it will reduce the amount of manure that they're putting down in the layer house. Mm. If they never go outside all winter, then most of the manure is going down in the house, and that just means more bedding for me. Right. So, uh, but this winter they're not going out. They're not going out at all. I haven't even bothered opening the doors. Um, and yeah, they and they don't like to be wet and cold. They they they're they're much less tolerant of it than the ducks are. Um, if there were any thaw at all, they'd be out there in the jiffy for sure. Yeah, and I mean I mean today is actually a pretty bright day out, and it's nice that you have this kind of greenhouse set up because you're they're still getting light even mm -hmm. in the midst of winter, which means that I mean I'm sure their egg laying diminishes slightly, mm -hmm. right? But oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, the, uh, the, that's one reason it's a greenhouse is for, is to, have, what's going on? Oh, the dogs there's are trying a, to get in. There's like a, several cat fights in here. What's the problem? Oh, there's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's that? That's not a dog hole. It's a cat hole, He's Finn. Like, I can't come in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, part of that was it's for solar gain, for warmth, yeah. and also so it's light, so that I might get more production during the winter. Is this facing south or no? That is south That's down south. the valley. Okay. Yeah, so we got southeast expo or southwest exposure yeah. isn't too bad. Yeah, um, and this is a very old structure. This is we built this when we built the barn, so that was almost 20 years ago now. Yeah. Um, so, but it's held up really, really, really well considering its age. Um, the polycarbonate paneling is really great. It doesn't yellow. It's been tough. Oh, oh like my. Dog, like, no, don't touch me when I'm laying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're probably not like as uh, pickable, pickle, pickable, uppable as like some of the ones that I have no, in the it's city. true. I mean, occasional yeah. I'll have pet birds. Yeah. In fact, I had one which was she was actually a white uh, a white hen that yeah. was from one of my breeding flocks and she was a bit pick a but yeah. I rarely have pet birds yeah. and so they are not as approachable, that's for sure. Yeah. They they quickly become so. Yeah. Um, I will sell hens to folks who just want a couple of backyard birds, especially when they're at you know retirement age, which is about for me is about three years mm. when they're not productive enough for me to keep them, but they still be totally great as a pet or right. a backyard bird. And they keep on still laying. Oh, just totally, not, yeah. just not enough. Yeah. And so I'll I'll give them to people for that, and they very quickly become pet like. Yeah. And be able to handle them, and they'll come when called and all that so I mean they're certainly not afraid of people I, um, I I've just not like taken the, the time to yeah, spend a lot of time with individuals exactly. <laughs> like the more time you spend with them the more time and and these girls seem pretty like they're not skittish you know no. they they come around your feet I mean of course there's a nice pumpkin right here too so. well that doesn't hurt yeah <laughs> they're, are you guys enjoying that sure you are yeah. well this looks uh, this looks amazing they look great um, even in the in the fact that we had all this winter and they get to well they have I would say they have been uh, less thrifty this winter than a lot of winter it's been yeah. really cold yeah and I mean you can and you can see it on them you've got you know they're they have they're pale you see how their combs and their wattles are a little yeah. pale um, they've been cold they're not 
They're not laying very much at all. I'm getting, you know, a couple flats a day. That's all you're gonna get, Lion. You can't have that. And, and where do you where do you sell your eggs? Um, right now, we're just selling them here at the farm store. Oh, okay, right on. So people come here and then they just like come and grab a dozen eggs or so. Yep. Nice. Yep. In this in the summer when I'm doing farmers market, I'll take them to farmers yeah. market. But for right now, production is low enough that I don't have a lot that I have to yeah. move. And that's one reason why we went to a small flock was that I'll always be sold out in the summer, yeah. but I won't have too much in the winter. Are you coming out? Are you coming out? Did you do it? You did it. You did it. Congratulations. Congratulations. What if I come and, what if I come and pick you up? What if I come and pick you up? There we go. Oh, oh. Oh, she's, this is new. <laughs> like, I liked it for a second. I liked it for a second, and then I couldn't do it. <laughs> so you're talking about one of the winter adaptions that you did is have a little heater for the water out here, because this, this whole place isn't heated. Right, so the greenhouse isn't heated, which means that we've got to heat the water. And I've tried multiple different things over the years, and I found that just the regular metal founts were the best for us. Um, they are challenging in that they tend to get feed in them. Yeah. Like, even though they were refilled and cleaned this morning, they already have a little bit of chicken feed. Right. And that's just because they'll eat, and they'll come over, and they'll take a drink. Um, so that has to be cleaned out fairly often when we do chores. And then also, sometimes, you'll get chickens that like to roost on top of them. Oh, do you and really? And they'll shit directly into the drinker. Oh, my And goodness. that's a real pain in the trick. Yeah. This year, I don't have anybody doing that. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah. Because uh, when you get a hen that likes to sleep on them, that's a yeah. real pain. That looks like a comfortable to sleep on. I know, right? You'd think so. Um, so these little heater bases are thermostatically controlled and they'll, you know, if it were 50 degrees out here, they wouldn't be on anymore. Um, and then once it gets cold, they turn on. And because this is all metal, it conducts really well. Yeah. And so even when it's been super cold and below zero, it hasn't frozen up here. Yeah. And so we're still able to get the lids on and off. Um, I've tried plastic ones, and the problem with plastic ones is that they don't conduct heat. Mm -hmm. And so this will stay melted, but this will freeze, right. and then you can't get the lids off. Yeah. And that's what we found with this nipple drinker. We tried these last winter um, in, an, in, a, in an attempt to A, keep it heated, and B, uh, keep keep the water cleaner right. by having a nipple. Um, and whereas all of this would stay thawed because you plug it in, there's a, a plug right here, yeah. and they plug in right here, um, and they would just hang. Um, but what we were finding is that the tops, the lids would freeze shut. Yeah. And okay, it's great, it's all thawed down <laughs> here, but I can't open it uh, well, to refill it. Well, also after watching birds drink, you know, we have some where they, they like to get their whole face in the water and some that are just a little bit more delicate, but they they seem to like to dip their heads in something as opposed to just like taking something from a nipple. I totally agree. It's like if, if, if you only gave them these, they yeah. would resist drinking for several days right. and finally, begrudgingly, they'd use the nipples. I've had flocks and mostly like meat flocks where they were introduced to these as very young birds, and yeah. this was their only water source, and they were well trained to use the nipples. Right. But the laying hens really don't like them at all. Yeah, I agree they're with very, you. They're very particular. So yeah. I, yeah. So, yeah. So we do use these in the summer yeah. without heating them. Yeah. We'll use them for for meat birds. Uh, the laying hens, we still um, in the summer we'll use these without the heater bases. Um, and we also have hanging drinkers that are called place-on drinkers, mm -hmm. which are basically like this, this, this style with a, with a well around the base, but they're automatic. Yeah, oh, they, nice. they hang and there's a water source that comes down and they're automatically refilling all the time. And that's what we use in the summer. Oh, great. And they, do, they don't work in the winter because of possible freezing. They'll then. just freeze yeah. solid. And it's a yeah. water line. Yeah. So the yeah. water line so, will just yeah, freeze solid. So these we just hand fill every day. So. And then the other thing too is one thing that the chickens really love to do to keep clean is dust bathe. So yeah. do they just do that here in the straw or what do you what do you no, do? No, I have a dust bath for them. Here's here's here's, here's the frozen duck food that they're oh playing with. Oh my gosh, there it is. The frozen yeah. duck food. I don't want to waste it. That's good oh, organic food. So they have a different kind of 
So they have back. a pool too. So <laughs> I pick up used pools all the time yeah. to use for the ducks. Yeah. Uh, and if one gets a hole in it, it won't hold water anymore, but right. it'll hold dust. Yeah. Um, so this is a mix of wood ashes from our wood stove. Uh, diatomaceous earth and expanded shale. An oh, expanded nice. shale is just, it's just sort of a small rock. Very lightweight too. Yeah. yeah, and it's one, it's a thing I use in the greenhouse, but I mix those three things together for them to dust in. And I, I chose the expanded shale because I noticed that in the summer, they will go up to where the expanded shale is and yeah. dust in it on purpose. Huh. So I'm like, oh, you like that stuff, okay. Yeah. Um, so in the winter, I keep it down here. And we just dump our wood, sh our wood ashes in here every week or so. And they'll use, they're using the straw around the edges as well. Yeah. Where they've dumped it out. But mostly yeah. they'll use the pool. I try to yeah. keep it concentrated. Otherwise, they'll just get lost in the bedding. I love when they, they dust bathe. They get really into it. They're like in their own zone. <laughs> it is. It, it's, it's their spa, yeah. their little spa treatment. Yeah, in addition to that, I did uh, did twice this winter treat them for, for poultry lice. Okay. Because that does happen occasionally. Right. Do you, especially in older birds. Do you ever have to treat them for like, yeah, like l lice or mites and then you can't um, have them eggs? Or do, like, is it an internal? Uh, or did you no, do an it's external? an external okay. dusting. Okay. It's, it's pyrethrin. Okay. Um, which, since we're a certified flock, there's a lot of those mite stuff, and uh, louse and mite stuff that we that cannot do. use, yeah. of course. Uh, but the pyrethrum is just the ground flowers. So it's just, it's a single ingredient. From chrysanthemums or yeah, something, right? Yeah, it's chrysanthemums, right? yeah. exactly. Um, and we do it at night. And we'll pick up each one and do what I call a shake and bake. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll, uh, one person will hold them upside down and the other person will take the dust and dust their rear ends. Um, and sometimes if there, it's a whole body issue, we'll actually put the bird in a bag with the dust, with her head sticking out, mm -hmm. and then shake the whole bird. <laughs> uh, but that's only necessary if like it's a full it's a body full thing, infestation. Yeah. Hopefully, I've gotten it prior to yeah, that, yeah. Uh, where mostly it's just around the vent. Right. Right, yeah, but and that you could tell you could tell if some of the maybe their vents are a little red, like like maybe perhaps on that one or or actually uh, you know a fascinating thing when we moved these birds in here we dusted every single bird and I kept an eye on that yeah and it was the birds with the least number of feathers that were louse free really yeah so like especially the Rhode Island Reds don't have lice at all yeah the big fluffy Australorps with the huge fluffy butts yeah they were the ones with the lice because it was it's so easy for them to hide in there and it's so hard for the birds to get the dust up close wow. to the skin yeah so the, the the more feathers a bird has the more lice they tend to have huh. another really excellent tip <laughs> and is that like is that like a, one of those meat birds there? The one that looks like tinier but is sitting right next to the Australis? She's got some red in her. Yeah. She could have been part of that breeding flock. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because I take a you know sort of slightly lighter weight females yeah. and breed them with a heavier weight male. Yeah. Look at the cats in the midst of all the uh, chickens. You see that? <laughs> like lion and uh, just like in the middle of all of it. <laughs> He's sort of part of the ecosystem. Yeah, he is. <laughs> He's like, I'm waiting for one of your eggs. Any one of you. Well, it's super important that the flock be pretty chill because especially in the summer where we're moving them a lot. Yeah. They have to be used to being moved a lot, having fences moved around them, having cattle near them. We used to have a lot of hogs near them. They're not freaked out by the dogs or yeah. the cats or, yeah, it's pretty important. If you'd like a tour of Kingbird Farms greenhouse and houseplant operation, then head over to our sister channel at Plant One On Me to check out those episodes. Additionally, if you haven't heard yet, Flock Finger Lakes will be giving 10% of its YouTube AdSense proceeds directly back to the community of the Finger Lakes. So you not only indirectly get to take part in this, which is cool, but you'll also be able to see where those funds go through some of the episodes we film. Additionally, our partners at Espoma Organic, which is a fourth generation, family owned and operated business providing organic fertilizers and soils for the lawn and garden industry, and has some collegiate roots here in the Finger Lakes, has offered to match those funds this year through product and or direct funds, depending on the give back campaign. So if you haven't yet, go check them out. And if you're on social media, tell them you appreciate their efforts. See you in the next episode.